thank you all for coming um, to hear about what I think is a really, really important topic. Um, I wanted to start by introducing um, my colleague, Roger Hoffman, um, who's um, involved with the institute that's affiliated with um, the Center for South Psychoanalytic Studies at the Institute for Contemporary Uranian Psychoanalysis. And um, Roger's been um, a huge support to me in um, um, over the past few months trying to put this, uh, these classes together. And um, um, in particular, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, at the time that um, this idea of this Affect Center was conceptualized, which was, was a while ago, but sometime around uh, October or November of last year, um, the, it actually started to get embodied. In other words, it started to be written material and so forth. And um, it, that coincided with my getting diagnosed with cancer. Um, and um, a, a very uh, serious uh, kind of cancer. And uh, I don't think those things are um, unrelated. I think that the effort to try to put forth a lesbian affirmative psychology that really values um, what lesbians have to offer uh, the culture, the society, um, that I think is actually profoundly transformational for all people. Um, and I think there's a lot of forces that have been historically allayed against that um, coming forward. Um, and so, anyways, I've, been, I've needed a lot of help in order to keep doing this work. And um, so I, it wasn't my, it's never my idea to ask for help. I, people always have to tell me, like, you ought to ask for help. <laughs> Because uh, um, lesbians, I think in general, are notoriously self-sufficient and uh, independent, and you know, I do it myself. Um, and I'm going to talk some tonight about um, some of the early uh, developmental failures that happen in the mommy, early mommy-baby relationship that I think uh, give rise to that uh, dynamic. Um, and um, so it was suggested to me that um, as I go along, um, one thing that's happening is that uh, this kind of a cancer, which is called ocular melanoma, involves, um, implicates, first of all, my eyesight. So I've lost vision in one eye. And I'm this thinker and reader, and it's like how I coped with living my whole life. And now, as I prepare for these things, I can't read. Um, it stresses me out. and. Um, and um, I'm being forced into what Jung would call my inferior functions, which are feeling and sensation. And, and it's a terrifying location for me. <laughs> and, um, and so I'm here, um, uh, but at the same time, it feels false to just talk from my thinking. It's a defensive operation for me. And so I want to really honor my feeling and sensation. I think that's part of what the cancer is about, is saying, you will. I get into your body and, and feel what it feels like uh, uh, to uh, attempt to become an embodied uh, human being and a lesbian in particular. So all that's to say that Roger is going to um, help me out here um, and be my prompter um, because undoubtedly I will get lost somewhere along the way um, as I go and I might ask him to help me out. So. Um, by asking me questions or saying maybe we could go to this now. So it's not really a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but you know the, the, the plan, you know, the program, you know, comes from it comes from a collaboration that supported me, but the work comes out of the work. Um, so I I invite you all to kind of uh, experience him as a good good mommy here. Um, Thing, hold me in that way. Um, okay. Um, so, um, and and as we go along here, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna try to weave in my own personal experience uh, and ways that um, that what we're talking about has shown up for me in my um, in my life, especially immediately right now with what I'm 
trying to deal with it, because I think it's relevant um, for um, all of us and for lesbians in particular and women in particular around getting into our bodies and the challenges and the early trauma um, that prevents that and creates massive states of disembodiment and dissociation. Um, so um, the, this is the first of three proposed talks. Um, um, this is the, on lesbian child development. And the first, this, this is the first one, which is really focusing on the earliest mommy baby dyad um, and the, the earliest attachment relationship between the, the, the mother and the lesbian baby. And then next month, um, I um, want to talk about what happens when um, there's um, the, the lesbian girl becomes aware that um, she has um, she's a girl and she has certain features in her body and what that's like in relationship to her mother, um, how she experiences her own body in relationship to her mother's body when that comes online, given that her mother's heterosexual and she's a lesbian. And then in the third talk, I'm going to talk about. Um, the edible stage and falling in love, what happens in falling in love with the mother. Um, but the, um, if the, or these, these stages are all each foundational upon the next. So the, this is, what happens here is foundational to what comes uh, in stage two and in stage three. Uh, so um, that's where I'm going to start. Um, and um, uh, I want to introduce you to um, two really important ideas. Um, there's a lot of people who have talked about child development and a lot of really interesting theories. I mean, I could probably talk here for years about all the different theorists who have theorized about what goes on between the mommy and the baby in the earliest part of um, coming, into, uh, coming into life. Um, but um, so I'm gonna like I'm just gonna go with the ones that actually were the most intense for me in the last month, uh, especially in relationship to my own uh, body that called to me. So I'm gonna talk about those. Um, and one thing about all of these theorists is um, they are almost never coming from um, a consideration of uh, the child who's gonna grow up to be homosexual and who's going to grow up to be lesbian. It's just not talked about, unless maybe very briefly in a pathologizing kind of way, except maybe Freud. Um, so what I'm going to want to do, so what I want to do is introduce you to two basic ideas that are going to like help um, help us sort of transform the, these um, ideas of these major psychoanalytic thinkers into lesbian affirmative ideas, uh, lesbian affirmative approaches. Um, so um, the first concept I want to introduce you to is this um, concept of the devil. And um, the, um, the devil is, um, it's, a, it's a Jungian idea. It was actually developed by Mitch Walker, who is a, um, a major uh, gay uh, psychologist and who uh, is theorizing about the value of homosexuality uh, in the psyche and in the world. And um, basically what the devil is, is um, for those of you familiar with Jung, he had this idea about the contrasexual in the psyche, like we all have masculine and feminine inside us. And his great genius was to identify that and to identify what he called the anima and the animus, which was for, uh, this is all through a heterosexual lens, that if you are a man, you have inside you a, an, an inner feminine who's like your inner beloved, your inner soul figure, and she is the one who connects you with uh, the divine, basically, and leads you on a journey of individuation and a journey of wholeness. Um, and if you're a, a, a female, a woman, heterosexual, then his idea is that you have an inner masculine who performs the same function. That's called the animus. Um, and um, what Mitch's um, great genius was, was to identify um, 
a comparable kind of soul figure that exists in the psyches of all people, um, but uh, exists in the psyches particularly of, home, of, of gay people. Um, and that is a same sex uh, soul figure that he called the double or the twin. And um, so we all have within us both a contrasexual and um, a same sex figure in the psyche, in the unconscious. And depending on what our libido is, where our, where our libidinal intelligence wants to go, if it wants to go towards heterosexuality, then the real, the real charge of romance is going to be with the contrasexual figure. But if it wants to go towards homosexuality, then the real charge is going to be with the same sex figure. And, um, but we all have this same sex figure in our psyches. And um, um, there is value in even heterosexual people um, or people who identify as fluid or bisexual in cultivating the same sex figure in, in the psyche because that figure is um, the one who sort of has your back. Uh, if you're, a, if you're a, a, a woman, she like she has your back. She's like a soul sister. She's there for you. She, um, you, you, when you're, when you're in relationship to her, you have a feeling like that you are, uh, you know, right with the world, and and sh the re cultivating relationship with her creates a quality of ego strength. Um, so, um, and I'm gonna sort of say that um, there's a big problem in the world and in the culture and in the society today because. The focus is so much on the contrasexual and so much on um, the heteros non heterosexual, and uh, um, and um, that Plato said that um, there are kind of two kinds of love: that the love between um, uh, people of opposite of the opposite gender is um, about creating um, literal children because you know when a man and a woman get together and they're like hot for each other what comes from that are literal babies um, but if two women come get together um, and they're hot for each other then what comes of that are not literal babies but what Plato called children of the mind which would be like the creation of art poetry like the Sappho um, social justice, movements for social justice, higher education for women, uh, move, uh, movements towards uh, religion and spirituality, all of these things come from that kind of relationship. Um, so we, okay. <laughs> so whenever I talk about the devil, I get freaked out. Uh, I, you know, my kids, I, when I say kids, I'm referring to um, inner feeling states that in um, Jungian psychology we personify them as um, as people and then we can relate to them so if I'm feeling scared or anxious um, then that, that, that I think about that or relate to that as a kid in me who um, something about trying to talk about the beauty of lesbian love here and the importance and the value of it immediately provokes in me um, the anxiety that I'm, some kind of attack is going to come from the um, heterosexual parents um, and that that's not okay and that I need to be silent and uh, anxiety comes up around that. So I try to be um, uh, transparent about that as much as I can when I'm talking about um, this subject matter because it's, it's powerful. Whenever, whenever talking about something wonderful and incredible and fantastic, uh, there's always the shadow side that gets constellated to, in order to work with, so to feel more of that. So that brings us to the subject of heteronormativity. That's the other idea I want to introduce to you. And I handed out a, a, a handout um, that has a long quote from um, this author whose, whose name is Gust Yep. And um, I actually don't know the gender of this person. So, uh, but this um, th this article is um, incredible, and it talked. It really gives a very elaborate definition about of what heteronormativity is. Um, and I just want to introduce you to this idea, which is, um, and I'm just going to 
quote from, yep, and you've got the long thing that you can read at your own leisure. Um, the presumption and assumption that all human experience is unquestionably and automatically heterosexual. 